Hello everyone, this is Reverend Kyle with another tutorial for your Android usage. Uh, one thing that I've noticed is a lot of people's hesitance to experiment with the Linux environment. So I'm going to give you uh, Windows users uh, a taste, an opportunity to uh, load a Linux environment without feeling um, apprehensive about it. Uh, so we are going to download two files here. First off, the first web page we will be going to is called virtualbox.org. Virtualbox is a free virtualization uh, program. It will allow you to run another operating system on top of the one that you already have loaded. Uh, we are going to go to the downloads page and download the latest version VirtualBox 4.04 for Windows uh, right here and we're going to click on this and it will download. Now I've already downloaded the file I'm just giving you an opportunity to see. You will want to save this file Please don't run it from the web page. It's 77 megabytes. Please save it somewhere first and then run it. So let's assume that you have this now and uh, you'll see that I do. It's uh, right here. And uh, we are going to go download another item. And uh, it is called PuppyLinux.org. Puppy Linux is a small version of Linux that has a very important piece that we are going to use uh, for our uh, Android uh, usage. Uh, it's called Gparted, G-P-A-R-T-E-D, and this is a program that allows you to create and manipulate partitions uh, for use with the Linux and Android operating systems. Uh, so we are again going to go to download latest release. Here is an ISO image file. It's 127 megabytes and again you'll click on this and you'll save it. Now for the sake of time I have already downloaded these two files so there's my VirtualBox and my Puppy Linux uh, ISO file. Uh, just to go through this real quick I'm going to install this. Welcome, next. I'm not changing anything. I'm just going through and hitting yes. Uh, be aware that uh, this last item uh, said that it's going to, and I apologize because I went through it too quickly, but it said that it is going to interrupt your network connection very temporarily. Just be aware of that. So when you do to go to install this, make sure you're not uh, in the middle of doing any other type of, uh, I don't know, streaming or uh, downloading uh, perfectly legal uh, torrent files. This is an important step in uh, the process if you're going to use some of the uh, newer versions. Yes, I will install that. Um, the newer versions of some of the ROMs uh, for specifically the Milestone XT720. Uh, and again, we're always, let's just always trust install. Um, some of the newer versions uh, talking about moving the Dalvik cache and uh, using uh, apps to SD or link to SD uh, requires some manipulation of an EXT2, 3, or 4 partition, and this is going to give you the opportunity to do so. Um, so after all this, uh, again, all I've said is yes to everything. You'll notice that my uh, network uh, item has uh, indicated that I've lost my connection and then it's slowly finding its way back. Uh, just so you all know, this is Windows 7, 64-bit uh, Ultimate. Uh, let's see here. So I'm saying to launch it. Now, um, what is this saying? It's saying one or more hard disks are not currently accessible. Do not show this message again. I'm going to ignore it. Okay. So it already has, uh, I've already installed uh, these. I'm just going to discard them just for the sake of um, let's remove, delete all files, sure, yes, fine, that's fine, this is, uh, remove, delete all files, uh, this will be fixed in the next, uh, that's fine, okay, so this is a fresh, clean, 
uh, install of VirtualBox. You'll notice again how quick and easy this was. Uh, so I'm going to go new. Welcome to the new Virtual Machine Wizard. Next, Puppy Linux. Operating System Linux version. Uh, again, it doesn't really matter. Next. Now, it wants to know how much RAM you want to allocate to it. My machine has 8 gig of RAM. I'm not changing this. I'm going to leave the base to 256. It's a very small version of Linux and it doesn't need a lot to run. So I'm going to hit next. The next thing it's going to say is it needs to create a virtual hard disk. This is a file that will pretend to be a hard drive for the Linux environment. Uh, I'm again just leaving all of the defaults and hitting next. Welcome to the create new virtual disk wizard. So it's creating the file needed to create uh, a virtual hard drive. Uh, I'm just going to leave it dynamic so that way if it needs more it will take more. It's not going to need a lot. Again it's a small environment. Now by default it says that it's 8 gigabyte. I do not need a gigabyte. As a matter of fact, I'm only going to give it um, just a little under a gig. And then next, and it's going to show you the area that it's going to put that file, the file name itself and the size, dynamically expanding. Okay, so right now it's going to create a VDI file. Okay, so here we go. It says powered off. Here's all the information for it. Again, I haven't gone into any great detail here. I've used all of the default settings. I'm going to select it, hit start. Welcome to the first run wizard. Next, it wants to know where the ISO file is. So I'm going to click over here and I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm going to find my puppy Linux ISO and hit open. And then next, again, finish. I haven't changed anything. This is all very, very generic. I'm not touching anything. It says, just wait five seconds for normal startup. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to wait five seconds. And here we go. It's loading up drivers. I know for some of you, Linux is a very, very scary thing. Uh, it doesn't need to be. And I encourage all of you, if you're, if you're watching this tutorial video, then you at least have an interest of some sort uh, with the Linux environment, whether you know that or not. Um, okay, so this is it. We're done. Really, it's it's loaded. Um, again, resolution. Do I want to change it? Not really. Do I want to change the keyboard? Whatnot. I know some of you aren't in the U.S., so if you need the, to do any of this, by all means, go ahead. Uh, okay, nothing has changed. That's correct. Okay, so I'm closing it. Uh, GUI interface, just like Windows. Uh, my my screen, for the sake of uh, uh, clarity of the video, I've I've lowered my resolution. Um, so I'm not doing anything here. This is it. It is up and it is running. 